What's going on guys, Logan JYA here on Trick Gaming's channel. Shout out to the king for letting me come on to do a deck profile. It's one of my favorite decks of all time. I hope you guys are going to enjoy it. Don't forget to smash the like button, subscribe to Trick, and if you feel so inclined to do so, come slide over to my channel, Logan JYA on YouTube and on Twitch, so be sure to come check me out over there. So, without further ado, shout out to the pen god himself. Let's get into this deck profile and combo tutorial. Let's go! What's going on guys, Logan JYA here on Triff Gaming's channel. Thank you so much to Steven for letting me come on here to do a deck profile for you guys. And I decided to do one of my favorite decks of all time and that is Goki. This deck I, is one of the first decks I ever did well with at an event and I have such a love for this particular build. I love playing this every format and adapting it and seeing how well it can shape up to the rest of the meta. And I want to tell you guys right now it has an end board that is comparable to that of Pendulum. Now is it better than the best deck? I'm not going to speak anything sacrilege here, but without further ado, I'll let you judge for yourself. Let's get into the deck profile. All right, guys, starting things off, we're playing triple copies of the Goki Super X. When you normal summon this card, you can special summon a Goki monster from your hand, and whenever any Goki monster is sent from the field of the graveyard, it searches a Goki card from your deck to your hand. It is very good. They're all amazing floaters, and they all can chain block for your other relevant effects like your E-Sold. It's really, really cool, and this deck generates a lot of advantage. Moving on from there, two copies of the Goki Twist Cobra. You can tribute any one Goki monster on the field to target another Goki monster you control, and it gains attack equal to that of the tributed monster. It's really good for getting over big problematic cards. That's why I really like Twist Cobra as a two of. It's 1600 attack bomb base, and it's another good level three that you can play. Moving on from there, we've got two uh, of the Inarchetypal Extenders, that being the Goki Headbat. You can discard another Goki card in your hand, target one you control to special summon himself. He's a key piece to our main combo. I'm playing two copies of the Goki Guts. He's a level one, something that people don't realize is when he's in defense position, he cannot be destroyed by battle. There's been so many games throughout history where I've actually been able to just either set a Goki Guts when I brick or just summon this off of Esold and I get stopped for whatever reason, and it lets me live a turn because people don't know how to read. We're all Yu-Gi-Oh players, a lot of us don't know how to read all right moving on from there we got the one copy of the goki octo stretch he's got a cool effect where he can uh, half the uh, battle damage or effect damage that you will take which can come up something to stay aware of and he's another level one target that's it for the Goki lineup in the main deck. We're going to move on to some of our extenders. I'm playing two copies of the Fire Flint Lady and one copy of the Super Quantum Red Layer. Uh, both are searchable off of your Durendal, which is an equipped spell. Obviously, you send it off of Esold if you need to, or you can use it to fetch these cards out of your deck, which is really good. Our next engine that we're playing is a very small Phantom Knight package of one... Uh, Ancient Cloak and one of the Silent Boots. They are part of your main combo and they're really, really good. You could play a bigger Phantom Knight engine, but in my eyes, I think it's better just to play as few as possible because the main stars of this show are the Gokis. Uh, one of our bricks, but still essential cards to the combo, is the Codebreaker Zero Day. You can still summon this as it's in your hand or graveyard, and it is a warrior, so if you see this in Extender, it still gets your combo started, but uh, it's not the greatest to see in your hand. However, he is a key essential piece of the combo. Moving on from there, we got our Dragoon pieces, because we are playing Dragoon in this deck. One Dark Magician, one Red Eyes Black Dragon. You don't need to play these. My main deck is at 40 cards. You can cut the Dragoon and the Verite out of the extra deck for two other cards. 100% if you don't want to play Dragoon. However, I do like to play it. I think it adds additional pressure and gives you a side strategy after you get hand trapped. I want to say this. About this particular build of Goki, I play a lot like I play Drytron. Drytron is my main deck nowadays, so I kind of adapted its playstyle to Gokis. They're both very combo-centric, generate a lot of advantage, and end on crazy boards. That's maybe why I like both of them very much, but I built them in a very similar way. And you can diverge and build them in different ways. I'm curious to see what you guys think. Moving on from there, we've got triple copies of the Ash Blossom in the main. These could be something else, but I am happy with the main deck Ash Blossom. I wanted to play more going second cards, and I wanted to play something that just has blanket protection overall. It's probably one of the best hand traps you could play in this deck. Uh, if I weren't to play this, I would play Infinite Impermanence, but it does kind of conflict with one of our trap cards, that being the Shade Brigadine, which is a card off of uh, the Phantom Knight engine. And if you have a trap card in your graveyard, you cannot activate it the turn it's set, which is kind of important for our combo. So when we go second, it kind of can conflict there, but you can cut the ashes for the imperms if you so desire. Moving from the monster lineup into the spells, we're playing two copies of the Goki rematch. This card is literally soul charge. You target two Goki monsters in your graveyard and summon them back. It's a key piece of your combo as well as your main follow-up play. So that's why we play two of this card. It's absolutely phenomenal. Moving on from there, our equipped spell lineup is two of the uh, Durendals and one of the Divine Sword Phoenix Blade. Now, you could cut the Phoenix Blade to play a third copy of Durendal, because Durendal serves an extender, and off of your E-Sold, you're usually only sending one equipped spell to special summon one of your level one Gokis. However, I like playing the Phoenix Blade, because it gives you inf 
infinite discard fodder for your Dragoons. So that's why we choose to play this one, but if you want to cut another brick out of the deck, feel free to play a third Durendal or a Living Fossil, something else. Moving on from there, the next package of extenders. This is something that I tried out recently in this new build, and I'm liking it. It's pretty fun. It's pretty cool. I'm playing one copy of Instant Fusion and two copies of the Ready Fusion. You can make this three Ready Fusions if you want, or you could even bump it up even more and go three Readies in one instant. I wanted to keep the deck at 42 cards personally, so if you cut the Dragoon package, you can make this three Ready Fusions in one instant by cutting the Red Eyes Fusion instead, and that puts you at an even 40 as well. It's another option for you, but these are awesome extenders. There's a lot of ways that you can do full combo without even using your normal summon, like this plus a Fire Flint. Uh, or you can use this later in the combo, which is why it's a little bit better than the Super Quantal Red Layer. It's a really good extender, so I really like playing this card. Moving on from there, we got some of our hard going second cards. Playing triple copies of the Forbidden Droplets. Now I know what you're saying, I don't want to price anybody out of this deck. You can absolutely cut these for Dark Ruler No Mores or any other hand trap. I just wanted to build this deck the absolute best it could be, and that's why I think Forbidden Droplets is really good. It gives you that ability to play going second against some of the strongest combo decks in the game. Now a reactive card for going first, I'm doing triple, the triple tactics talents. I thought this card was going to be a lot cheaper after it got reprinted, but it's been going back up. I hope you guys were able to get your hands on, but if not, again, this is another card you can take out, whether it be for more hand traps. You also can choose to play the Neospace Connector plus Aqua Dolphin package as another really strong going first option. The only problem is in this particular build, normal summon Neospace Connector is not actually full combo. You need an extender to go with it. So it's a two card combo, but it's still pretty good. It's another option you can do. It's a whole lot cheaper, but I'm doing the Triple Tactics Talents because it's a bit more versatile than the Aqua Dolphin. doesn't require you to play an additional brick, and uh, yeah, it's also pretty good going second if the need arises. So that is why we are playing that. Moving on for the one of spells, we've got the one called by the grave for hand trap interruption, of course, the one monster reborn as an extender, the one rota to search pretty much any monster in our deck, and the one red eyes fusion for the dragoon play. That's it for the spells. Let's finish things off with the trap lineup, really short and succinct. We're playing two copies of the Fog Blade and the one Shake of Brigadine as part of our Phantom Knight package that goes into our full combo. So that is it for the main board coming in at 42 cards, as I said. Let's get into this extra deck real quick. First and foremost, playing two copies of the e Sold. Special summons out any of your uh, level 1 Goki monsters. Also gives you a free search on summon, and you get to chain block for that free search with your Goki effects when they hit the graveyard, which makes sure you can't get hit by something silly like an Ogre or a Gamma on the first effect of e Sold, which is pretty cool. Just generates a lot of advantage. Uh, next warrior card in the package is the Rusty B. Goes with our Phantom Knight package, extends into the full board. I'll do a combo tutorial at the end. Moving on from there, we've got the Virus Swordsman and the Codebreaker Virus. Uh, again, another essential piece of the combo. It gives you one of those crazy boards. These guys are insane warrior extenders. If you haven't read them, I definitely, cons I definitely consider doing so, especially if you're interested in playing this deck. We're going to get into the more generic stuff now, playing the one copy of Link Karibo. It can be essential. A lot of your Gokis are level 1. Sometimes you need to dump them in the grave to get something like that rematch, or give yourself a free search. It, it, it does come up, so the Link Karibo can be quite important. Follow that up with the one copy of Link Spider. Sometimes when you're going for your full combo to end on Dragoon, you need to use your Shade Brigadine, turn it into a Link Spider, and then you can turn that Link Spider and any other monster into the Verte to make your Dragoon. So it can be important to play this card as an option. Moving on from there, the one Phoenix to pop back row, and the one Nightmare Unicorn to shuffle back anything. Just good to have the generic Nightmares in here while you're climbing through your packages. Sometimes there'll be things you need to remove. It's good to have these options in there. Moving on to our Link 4s, we've got one copy of the Goki Power Load Ogre. This card is a Towers monster. He's unaffected by all other card effects. He comes in base at 28, but gains attack based on the Link rating of the other monsters on the field. And you contribute a Goki and a Goki Link monster and destroy cards your opponent controls, non-targeting up to its Link rating. So if you tribute himself, you can destroy four cards your opponent controls. Uh, your ending combo can either end on this card, Goki Power Load, or Apollosa. Depending on the matchup, you can decide which one you want to prefer to go to. So both really, really good cards. Moving on from there, we got the one copy of Axis Code Talker. You can cut this for a Boral Sword if uh, budget is a bit of a constraint, but Axis Code is definitely better. Helps you clear off boards, clear off those big problems. Really easy to climb into with Code Breakers. Finally, we've got the Verte and the Dragoon for the uh, Anaconda package, and the one target for your uh, Ready Fusion slash Instant Fusion, which is the Carbonala Warrior. He's a normal warrior monster that serves as your extender. Now to wrap up this deck, guys, I'm going to go through the side deck super fast. You can really adapt this to whatever your play style fits or whatever meta you're facing off against, whether it be your locals or a bigger event, you might want to adapt it. But this is a pretty good across-the-board type of side deck. 
In this build in particular, I'm doing the Triple Nibiru. We want to play high impact hand traps because we only have so much space. Cutting cards out of the main engine can sometimes be difficult, so we want to take out the things that aren't doing much when we're going second, so we bring in the cards like the Nibirus. Also, for that pesky Drytron matchup, I know I'm one of those guys you might match up against playing it. You gotta have those drolls on fleek, ready to go, just in case. Following up from there, we've got triple copies of Twin Twisters to blow out that back row. One copy of the Harpies Feather Duster. Um, again, blow out that back row. Follow that up with triple copies of the Solemn Judgment. The One Imperial Order is an absolute blowout for when you're going first. And then finally, rounding things off, we've got the one copy of the Red Reboot to really flip the bird to those back row decks. Now that's it for this deck profile, guys. I really hope you like it. Don't forget to slide over to my channel and let's get into a combo tutorial. All right, guys, let's get into this combo tutorial so I can show you what kind of boards this deck can end on. And for this combo, your hand can consist of any one Goki monster plus any single extender. So that can be Super Quantal Red Layer to start off with, Fire Flint Lady, Instant Fusion, Ready Fusion, or the Durendal to get you into any one of those. And if you happen to open up the Goki Super X, you can be any other Goki name and it'll get you into your full combo. For the sake of this example, I'm going to do it with just an, any generic extender. I'm going to use the Ready Fusion because it's the newest card here and I think it's kind of fun. Now, I want to say that it doesn't matter what the other cards in your deck, uh, in your hand, are actually. So we're just going to put three blanks in there, three triple tactics talents, and we're going to start off like this and go through a quick example of what a full combo looks like. Let's get to it. Alright guys, let's get into this full combo. To start things off, we're going to normal summon that copy of Goki Super X and pay a thousand life points to activate our Ready Fusion. Using that, we're going to get to special summon that Carbonala Warrior from the extra deck like so, and that gives us two warriors on our field to get our play started. So we're going to link these two guys off like so to summon the E sold in the extra monster zone like this. And the first and most important step that I want to point out is that we want to chain block our assault here. Okay guys, so we're going to use our Goki Super X effect chain link two, E sold effect chain link one. And what we're going to search is actually pretty important here. So I want to make sure we get this right. We're going to add the one copy of the Goki head bat off of the Super X and any other Goki name off of the E sold. Next thing we're going to do is use the E sold effect on field, sending the Phoenix Blade from deck to grave. You could also use a Durendal if you opened up with the Phoenix Blade and summon out any level one. That could be Goki Guts or it could be uh, the Goki Octo Stretch. Moving on from here, we're going to use Headbat's effect, pitching the Twist Cobra, special summoning himself from the hand by targeting the Goki Guts on the field. And I want to point out something very important here. If you play against this deck, this is the only safe time to nib. If you do not Nibiru here, you lose. And even if you do Nibiru here, you still lose. Because I'm searching Goki Rematch off of one of these two names, and I'm still making Dragoon. I'm blowing up your Nibiru. Maybe even can go further beyond, depending on the amount of extenders. So, just want to preface that, because the next thing we're going to do is we're going to link these guys off and summon that Apollosa on top like so. So we got a three-piece Apo here, and we're going to go Goki's Effect, Chain Link 1 and 2. That's going to give us two more searches. We're actually going to grab double copy of Goki Rematch here. So we've got Secure Follow-Up for next turn, as well as uh, the, the continuing of the play right now. So we'll activate that Rematch, summon back any two names. We've got a level 1 and a level 2. Don't forget they have to be different levels for the Rematch. We're going to turn these two guys off. And we're going to start our Code Breaker play. So we're going to summon the Virus Swordsman underneath. Virus Swordsman effect actually summons out the Zero Day from the deck. You link these two off, which will summon the Berserker right here. Berserker's effect brings back the other two from the graveyard. It doesn't really matter where you put them for this particular combo, so I'm just going to point that out real quick. Moving on from here, we're going to turn the Zero Day and the Virus Swordsman. Phantom Knight Rusty Bardish over here. Rusty Bee's effect will send from deck to grave the Ancient Cloak, like so. Uh, setting a copy of the fog blade over here. So that's one fog blade on lock. We'll use Ancient Cloak's effect in the graveyard, banishing it to add that Silent Boots to hand. Then we'll special summon it since we control Phantom Knight. Link these two off. And now we get to go into our Verte. Now I want to also mention, if you don't think Dragoon is the best for this matchup, you can turn these two guys into a Power Load Ogre instead, which is another Towers monster, completely unaffected, because you have enough for a Link 4. Just prefacing that, they're both warriors. You could do it that way, but we're not going to do it that way this time. We're going to end on Negates. We're on Trish's channel, we're trying to do Negates right now, okay? So we're summoning Verte, paying 2,000 life. Send that Red Eyes Fusion to the graveyard, as well as the pieces to go along with it. There you go. And that lets us bring out our Dragoon. So, looking pretty good. We've got three monster effect negates, one Omni negate, but we are not done yet, guys. We're going to go into the graveyard. We're going to banish that copy of Silent Boots. 
and that is going to give us another search for another copy of fog blade like so next we're not done yet guys we're not passing turn yet we're gonna banish any two warriors from our graveyard doesn't really matter who i like to keep the gokis in there so i'll take out the carbonala codebreaker virus doesn't really matter who it can just be any two warriors you can banish esold if you want and i'll add back that divine sword phoenix blade so let's take a head count here, okay? We've got three, four, five monster effect negates. We've got the Dragoon on lock for the Omni negate. And then we've still got five cards in our hand with guaranteed follow-up for the next turn. It's gonna be very difficult for anybody to surmount this field, even if they have the Dark Ruler or Droplets. We still got them on lock with the two Fog Blades. Kind of similar to how Drytron plays, right? So anyway, guys, that's it for this combo tutorial. I'm definitely looking forward to doing even more combo tutorials, especially a nutty one that ends on an even crazier board if you have one more extender on my channel in the future. But huge shout out to Steven for letting me come on here. Shout out to Triff Gaming. Everyone follow, subscribe to this man, like the video, and I will see you guys on my my stream and on trip stream all the time I'm always in chat Logan JYA signing off have a great day <laughs>